you need to gather that data. All different platforms are saying different things. It's you want to be comparing apples to apples and not apples to grapes. Welcome to the e-commerce coffee break podcast. In today's episode, we discuss winning data strategies for e-commerce growth. Joining me on the show is Utip Kapanen. She is the lead marketing analytics strategist at supermetrics.com. So let's dive right into it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today, we want to find out more about data. We want to find out what kind of winning strategies you can use for e-commerce growth when it comes to data. We really want to dive into and finding out what kind of data you need to use, where you need to make smart choices and also privacy rules that comes with data and everything. So huge topic there. And joining me on the show today is Oti Kapan, and she's the lead marketing analyst strategist at supermetrics.com. Oti uses her expertise in data to help marketing teams make smarter and more informed decisions. With over one decade of experience in media agencies, she has a deep understanding of the global marketing landscape. She worked with a diverse range of clients from FMCG, and retail to e-commerce, helping them to unlock the full potential of their brands and drive successful business outcomes. So we have a lot to cover. Let's welcome her to the show. Hi, Oti. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing. I'm doing very great. Uh, weather is great here in Helsinki, Finland. What, which we always need to mention. <laughs> no, that's perfect. It's always a good start. So. Yeah. Let's dive into data. Let's dive into analytics, everything that comes with it. Um, there have been a lot of changes, specifically in the last two, three years. Can you explain to me how the marketing analytics landscape has evolved over the last few years? Yeah, happy to dive in. So we all know that it's very competitive and complicated landscape. And especially for e-commerce companies, it's highly competitive. And we need the data and insights uh, for making the, the right decisions. And and it is getting so much more complicated. I started a little bit over 10 years ago in digital marketing. And comparing to that, how it used to be back then, we would have maybe Facebook back in the day, but not even Instagram and direct buy and slightly just programmatic buying. And yes, analytics, but very uh, rudimental element of that to now it is just so much more complicated. And what we've lately been saying is it's, there is no clear funnel anymore from your your customers don't move from awareness to purchase in a single clear A to B journey. It's mm -hmm. just so much more complicated. It's back and forth between different sources and comparing and Google calls this the messy middle. And there's a lot of articles about that. And they found out, for example, car buyers can have like 900 digital touch points within like a three month period. So it's, it's just going into a huge amount of data. And we see this from Supermetrics data as well, because we've been around since uh, a while ago. And we see that the amount of data points and channels and touch points to measure customer journeys has increased 200% within the last three years, just only last three years. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just much more. And the all the regulatory uncertainty and privacy and news from yesterday day of the recording of this came out that google is not deprecating third-party cookies so everything is just up in the air so it's it's mm -hmm. a it's becoming very complicated and requires a lot from a person uh, nowadays to handle it no not everyone is a data strategist and companies small and medium companies on the growing um way to become bigger they're bombarded with more and more data they're using yeah. more systems their tech stack becomes bigger every tool has their own reporting system their own analytics system and then if you dive in and take the time you will find out nothing matches uh, i had yeah. experienced myself last week i was working with half a dozen tools to find out something and it was just impossible so yes. what do you see are the biggest mistakes companies make when they are looking at their marketing data? Well, I think one is is not knowing what to measure or what data to use. So we've sort of identified three different sections to go over, like to focus on and to utilize for growth. First being data in. So you need mm -hmm. to gather that data. All different platforms are saying different things. It's you want to be comparing apples to apples and not apples to grapes. One good example, for example, is video views. 
all platforms define it very differently. So you need to know what you're measuring. So, and you need to be measuring in a centralized, so gathering that data uh, into more of a data warehouse, into one single truth where you define these things. And then most likely also in on-demand sort of decentralized way and looking at it in shorter, longer term. So just gathering the data in is the first step. And the first thing mm -hmm. that could be the mistake that uh, e-commerce companies are doing, that they're either collecting everything or almost nothing at all. Second okay. would be then how to utilize that data. So what to measure, what do I do with that data? What questions do I want answers to before you start actually then uh, doing it? Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned there's a ton of different platforms out there. And I know that Supermetrics integrates with more than 150 platforms. For a brand, for an e-commerce business out there, I mean, it's, it's very difficult. So how do they find out which data to use and how to use the data correctly. You, you touched on that one, um, but with yeah. so many platforms, how does it work? I think it's important to look at what do you use to, for example, if you're talking about media buying or analytics, what, what are the main tools that you are using? So those would be the first ones uh, to start gathering that data. More often than not, it is some type of analytics tool. Google Analytics uh, is more uh, common. One could be then Meta, so Facebook platform or TikTok nowadays is rising. And then you might have some programmatic buying DV360 or other DSP that you're using. So that is defining your priority channels or if you're using retail, Amazon or something like that. Those are your priority. Let's start with those and mm -hmm. then add on CRM or any other data that you have. So prioritizing and defining the questions you want answers to. Okay. With Supermetrics, the integration obviously is very, very wide. And I think one thing, and you mentioned that, is like um, different platforms measure different things differently or yeah. they name them differently. So you have a bit of a mismatch there. How do you bring this together? Yeah, we luckily have a tool within our platform that is uh, for transforming the data so that we've sort of done the thinking for anyone uh, that we look at, let's say, Google Analytics, Meta, and let's say Google Ads. And we've identified that impressions means this in each of these channels or budget or campaign name is defined like this. So we have... Uh, tools uh, helping customers with that so that you don't have to do it manually because that's basically how you would have to do it is define this and this and this mean this. And it's uh, quite a lot of work to do the more platforms you're using. Mm -hmm. Attribution is always a big topic. And you said the funnel, you mentioned it before, there's 900 yeah. different touch points when somebody wants to buy a car. And I think even if you're buying some apparel, um, you might come from one platform and then you go to another one and then at the end you buy it either on TikTok shop or on a Shopify store or wherever you buy it. Yeah. And attribution, most providers out there want to claim the attribution for themselves. Google yeah. wants to have the attribution. Facebook wants to have the attribution. So it becomes really difficult where to put your marketing spend. Give me a bit of a background. How does it work? What's your approach on this? Yeah. So Overall, I think we're moving past last click attributions and the like, or first click uh, attributions to data-driven attribution. Good thing about attribution, it is fast and easy to scale. Uh, minus is you're only most likely looking at digital. But if you work in e-commerce and you're not doing any marketing besides digital, it will give you a lot of answers. But it only looks at, as you said, the attributed sales. And even if you try to do the data-driven attribution and try to get sort of... Um, get those double conversions out of it. Um, it's still not incremental sales. It's just looking at this is the sales we got and you don't know if you would have gotten it anyway. Um, good for daily channel optimization and campaign optimization. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example of one of your clients, case study, you don't need to name the brand. Um, what kind of results they saw after bringing all the data to them together and have a what you called a uh, one proof of of truth or one yeah. point of truth um so we've gotten a few good results with clients um we've seen that they can improve up to i think it was 35% their results when they started optimizing it through attribution so it is about 
doing analyzing it and then testing it out but i think what's also good in addition to just doing attribution is then combining it with mmm or incrementality experiments so not just looking at the attribution that gives you the best uh, results uh, in the cases we've seen with our customers mm -hmm. what's the usual um, onboarding process because everyone has a different tech stack so I think that can be quite difficult and lengthy or correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. How does that so, work? Uh, within our platform, um, basically you would have access straight away. So then it's about how quickly you can do it. But of course we can help with the onboarding. I think overall we, and we do help with the onboarding, we cover it within two weeks to month, a month and a half, depending on of course the timeline and how many people need to be onboarded. But the platform is quite easy to use. You just connect all the platforms you want and all the sources, and then where do you want it to go? Um, is it a centralized solution of data warehouse or uh, more of an on-demand onto like Looker Studio? Uh, and then you just start working on it. Um, you can start simply with some dashboards or then go to more complicated like the data warehouse solutions. So actually it's quite quick to get used to it. I, I started using Supermetrics back in 2017 when I was working in a media agency. And of course, we the platform wasn't as complicated or as expensive as it is now, but um, it was quite fast. We just, uh, 10 people digital team started to use it and uh, do all the reporting and dashboards uh, in a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. Good point. I want to touch on that. So you were in an agency. Who's the normally the user of Supermetrics? Was in an organization? Was an agency? Is it marketing? Who is it? Who, who yeah. So we've sort of identified two different um, target groups in a way. Um, one would be the data team, and that's where the centralized solutions would be. Those want more often than not the raw data from the platform, so that they can create the one single truth and manipulate and transform the data as they see fit or you fit or utilizing our uh, solutions for that. The other would be then uh, the marketing team. So it could be the digital buyers or the CMO wanting to see quickly some dashboards, like more of the on demand on uh, how are my campaigns doing exactly now? Or we have a Black Friday campaign going on. What, how is it performing and wanting to make quick decisions? So we clearly see that uh, it should be used by sort of the two different sections of the marketing team, the data and then the uh, digital buyers. Mm -hmm. I want to touch a little bit on um, that there's less data than there was like yeah. in the golden year, the golden years, five, six, seven years ago when Facebook was giving us everything in the kitchen sink. So these times are over. They will not come back. Apple has done quite a bit of damage when it comes to data or giving data to us as marketers. Um, how do you deal with this and how does um, privacy concerns play into this whole game? Yeah, I think it's it's interesting how we've gone from working in <laughs> industry for 10 years, going from little by little, getting more data and the glory days of, as you said, the everything and you can do anything you can just imagine, which then resulted in all these privacy uh, regulations. Uh, we've gone to back into the, oh, how do we work and what data can we rely on? So we see it's, we've actually read a lot about the Google's modern measurement playbook that introduces the framework of utilizing all of these different attribution, incrementality and MMM to work together to get the best data because it is the reality. Everyone's going into their own like little meta world and Google world and not sharing the data together. So you can't rely on just only those platforms, what they're getting. You need to analyze the data yourself. And then that means you need to be doing it on multiple levels. So looking at short term and longer term. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's complicated. It's a messy, messy, messy situation. It is a messy situation. So specifically smaller medium enterprises have, have a hard time. They don't necessarily have a data team and data strategists and data scientists yeah. and so on. How can a small business um, use marketing analytics like Supermetrics to compete with bigger companies? Yeah, I think it gives you an advantage of being able to then easily get the data into one place and having control of your data. Um, you don't need 
any super experts or agencies to help you if you just want to get your data in consolidated into one place. We even offer like storage if needed to some uh, customers uh, in some cases, but that allows it to be that uh, you don't need to be any more super technical unless then you start doing these MMMs and more uh, centralized solutions, and uh, which is even above my pay grade on how those are done in like statistical analysis and all of that. That's the other experts in the field. So you start little by little. And um, I think the best guidance I'd gotten and also given to a lot of my customers in agent side was you need to know where you're going but being also realistic that you won't be able to do it within six months or even probably in a year if you're starting from zero if you're starting from we are gathering this data manually from each platform and we're sort of like just doing it um, even Google's the playbook gives a timeline of over a year to go from zero to utilizing all of these um, measurements. Mm -hmm. It just answered the, my question was like, is there any kind of homework that I need to do before I can get started? And you said there is a timeline to it. It just takes some time. Yeah. Which brings me to the question, who is your perfect customer? I think anyone who is willing to learn and test out things because there unfortunately is no holy grail one answer to any, everyone. It's so dependent on what market you are in or what type of products, what's your market within that landscape of your competitors and everything. So anyone who's willing to test and learn and just willing to get that knowledge is an ideal customer. So it doesn't matter, are you in Coca-Cola or BMW or a small agency? It's just willingness to uh, learn. Mm -hmm. With the data, we're obviously chasing a, a moving target out there. As you just said, Google, after denying us the third party cookie for the future, now completely reversed their decision. What's your outlook? What's what's happening within the next 12 months? What do you think happening in the market is happening in the market right now? I think the Google's uh, Google's decision took out the urgency that was at the moment because the reality was no one really had a clear answer. There wasn't a clear winner. Of what is the new cookies? So it's now taken out the urgency, but it isn't removing the fact that even Google is going to go into that the customers can opt out or opt in on using the cookies. So how they're going to do that? Are they going to push it to be a big pop-up banner and everyone just opts out? Or are they going to do it more secretly behind the scenes? Within 12 months, I would say agencies and media are going to continue developing new solutions, uh, still going to push on getting gathering that first party data. Um, but I would say we're more of a now we can take a breather and not being tumbled in the tidal wave of what is happening. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it's good news, but on the long run, it will be first party. Yeah, it, anyway. it's good news, but I wouldn't... Uh, as any e-commerce or any company rely on now that cookies are staying and everything's back to normal. It's it's still the reality that um, it's slowly by little by little going to die down in a way that they say like TV is dying now. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the pricing structure of Met Supermetrics. Yeah, so we have multiple different pricing strategies, but depending on what, sources you want to move the data into is it looker studio google sheets power bi or excel so that sort of defines it as well and then at also how many different destinations you have but then how many different uh, sources you're using we don't price it depending on how much data volume you have so there won't be any surprises if you mm -hmm. start uh gathering much more data for example from google analytics so um, we have okay. starting prices for smaller companies, and then the bigger it gets, then our salespeople are happy to help with that as well. But starting from 29 euros a month. Okay. And I saw on your website, there's an overview of all the tools that you support. Again, 150. Yeah. It's, it's a very long list. I went through it, um, <laughs> but there's pretty much everything in there that I can think of. Um, before our coffee break comes to an end today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, I think... 
where especially if you're starting in e-commerce or you're now starting to be like okay we have this up and running what do we do next I think it's just about planning ahead or in a way planning backwards so start with what do you want to know for example what performance what is my different channels uh, giving me performance out of what channels are the best for this and then figure out what measurement to use to get that and what data do I need to get that and then start collecting that data uh, of course you need a lot of historical data so figure it out quite fast <laughs> and start gathering that data I think it's just figuring out trusting your gut because the reality is everything is changing have a vision what it is that you what the brand wants it is and what the e-commerce and what are you doing and start testing it out that's that's basically and for that nowadays it's it's data is sort of the king of everything yeah but i think the, the approach of first knowing what you want um, is good than just collecting collecting and then trying to figure out what you want to do so i think that's a, a much better path is to get your head around what your end goal is and what you want to do with this where can people find go to find out more about you guys uh, you can easily find us at supermetrics.com and in most of our social media platforms as well. Although in uh, in social media platforms like TikTok, we focus more on fun memes and <laughs> some information. Uh, but we also have a new uh, community. So uh, we just launched it. We want to build it out and be that resource of if you have any questions or it generally about data and measurement we're sharing a lot of information there and then you can join in and ask questions and some of us will then answer it or the other community members will answer it okay sounds good i will put the links in the show notes as always then you just one click away yeah Oti, thanks so much for your time today i think that was a really good overview of what's happening right now in the landscape of data and how you can optimize that for your own business for your own agency and i hope a lot of people will reach out to you and will become part of the community. Thanks so much for, yeah. for your time. Thank you.